When you look at the MBTA commuter rail, you probably just see a regular commuter train that brings people in and out of Boston. However, to rail fans, it's an entirely different story. MBTA has a very interesting history that's worth knowing about. This references MBTA's long line of equipment, power, and also infrastructure history, along with how it even started in the first place. This is the story of the MBTA commuter rail, past, present, and future. First off, let's go way back to MBTA's creation in 1964. However, this wasn't really the commuter rail's creation. The commuter rail was actually created in 1977 as the sole commuter rail in and around Boston, Massachusetts. Back then, power was pretty basic for the commuter trains. They used FP10s and RDC-deprived rail cars to pull the trains in and out of Boston. However, later it would become outdated and they would have to use the more reliable F40PH locomotives. However, this wasn't the end of the FP10s. They would remain until the late 1900s and same thing goes with the RDC railcars before being replaced with the first CTC railcars. Now the FP10s were being retired from MBTA service and would be replaced by the brand new F40PH-2Cs. These were made parallel to the F40PHs and would serve as the main power for MBTA trains for years to come. MBTA however was still missing something. Bi-level cars. The CTC4s and BTC4s would be the newest bi-level cars and rail cars for the MBTA, increasing capacity and becoming the rider's favorite type of rail car to ride in. MBTA needed some new power though, and quickly, because the FP10s were starting to become very unreliable with age. This would be a perfect time for the GP40 MCs to come in. A rebuilt freight locomotive from Canadian National with a wide cab. These locomotives are very iconic for the MBTA, denoting their freight history in their former life. Along with that, they'd also be replacing the FP10s for good. Now let's switch away from MBTA. Amtrak was now electrifying Boston to New Haven for the new Acela service. This means that MBTA could have faster speeds on the more straight tracks between Providence and Boston for the providence Stoughton line. In 2001, MBTA also completed the restoration of the Greenbush line. To commemorate that, F40PH-2C number 1052 got a special sticker for the Greenbush line. In 2004, MBTA got two frontrunner MP36PH-3Cs, number 10 and 11. These two units were infamous for their very loud horn. These two units were recently sent to Wabtec, and another one was put into storage. In the mid-2000s, MBTA had a dispute over what new locomotive to buy to replace their F-40 fleet, which was already going well into the mid-70s. So the MBTA decided on a locomotive from Spain. However, this was rejected because of a Buy American Act. So they settled on something built by Motive Power. In 2013, these locomotives would be delivered. The HSP-46 locomotives would go into service in 2014 as the ultimate trash cans on the MBTA, infamous for their burning. In 2015, the original F-40PH fleet was retired and put into storage at Rochester, Massachusetts before they were recently sent out for scrap for the Grafton Nupton. In 2019, the first F-40PH-3C locomotives arrived. These rebuilds would be the first ones and would make the F-40PH-2Cs extinct. 
While looking virtually the same on the outside, internally they are brand new. In early 2021, MBTA in installed cab signaling on the tracks called ACES PTC. This would make it so that other trains had to regulate their speeds on MBTA trackage. Currently, the commuter rail runs under power restrictions depending on where you live. If you live on the North Shore, you can get any locomotive, however most trains will just have single level cars, while if you live on the South Shore, you would get mostly HSP46s and F40PH-3C rebuilds and only double decker cars and maybe a few single levels. The MBTA line with the least amount of ridership as of the time of the making of this video is the Fairmount line between Boston and Reedville. MBTA runs on most of the power and rail cars that they used to run on 20 years ago, like the CTC and BTC cars, the GP40MC, HSP46, F40PH rebuilds, and the F40PH-2C, which is currently being phased out. As of the time this video has came out, MBTA has not electrified any of their power or any of the lines they are on. However, this will now tie in with the next topic. Nobody really knows what's going to happen in the future. However, and one thing that is for certain that will happen in the future is all F40PH-3C units will be rebuilt, probably by 2024. One thing MBTA plans to do in the future is electrify. They will probably start with the Providence Stoughton line due to it already being electrified for the most part. Some concept art and photoshops have already came out releasing what they want to do with this electrification project. One thing they could do is buy Stadler EMUs like Caltrain or Caltrans. Another option for the MBTA is to buy Charger locomotives because the rest of the fleet is already starting to age. And along with that, they can also be geared for electricity pretty easily. Along with the Providence section of the Providence Stoughton line, they also want to electrify the Stoughton branch and the Fairmount line to Reedville, Massachusetts. Along with that, they also want to electrify all the way to Beverly. MBTA also wants to put battery service on some of the lines, including the infamous Grand Junction. Another thing the MBTA plans to do in the future is rebuild the MP36s number 10 and 11, and along with that, GP18 number 904. The future is still ahead of us, and we'd never know what could happen until then, if these plans would be put into motion, or if they'd just never happen at all and would just be mere concepts. Thank you guys all for watching. I'm trying to get more into this genre of kind of what I call documentaries. And I put a lot of effort into this video. And I really hope you enjoyed it.